and welcome back to Alone in the Dark. When we last left off, we completed the game as uh, Eileen. Now, let's start the other side of the tale. Now, I did do some digging, a little bit of reading, if you will, as I'm now on holiday, uh, which should be a happy, fun, good time. However, uh, my holiday started off with me losing the recharging case for my uh, Galaxy Buds Live, which... <sighs> No problem, right? Just just order a replacement. Oh, right. Yes. They don't make replacements. No. So it's like a £140 uh, set of headphones. Absolutely useless. And <clears throat> second fuck factor, which is going to make things interesting. My 4G network, which I use to upload my videos, doesn't work. Not as in it's cut out for a bit because it does that it hasn't worked for three days and i haven't been able to get hold of the uh, company so hopefully at some point i'll be able to upload these videos for you uh we'll, we'll, we'll see we'll see what we can do anyway with all that fun stuff out the way let's go let's play the other side of this tale which as i said i've been doing some reading and apparently it is Quite a little bit different. More heavy on the action, apparently, which sounds good to me. I mean, come on, he starts off with a double barrel handgun, which is a thing. I wonder this time round, are we actually going to get some bullets this time? Also, uh, about 30 seconds before I decided to start recording this, Oh yes, uh, and we are slightly behind schedule today because I've wasted the whole morning waiting in for an electrician because we had a leak uh, and it's blown out our heater in the bathroom. Uh, waited all morning for the electrician to arrive. Uh, turns out he's not arriving till tomorrow now. Uh, but a bit of good news, I have Alone in the Dark for the Xbox 360. Literally just arrived. So that's going to be a good fun time. Uh, I've been told it's a terrible game. In the dark. Which is good. We like terrible games. Uh, I guess we're just going to hit up new game. That's all there is to it, I suppose. Gloucester, Massachusetts. October 30th, 2001. 2100 hours. Do we need to watch this again? I guess so. First name, Charles. Date of birth, February 17th, 1944. Presumed date of death, October 24th, 2001. Somewhere in the United States, October 31st, 2001, 1800 hours, 43 minutes. So? They'll be on Shadow Island in about an hour. Carnby's a loose cannon, but we had no real choice. Then the professor. Professor Eileen Sedrak is convinced that Obed Morton is her. We had no trouble persuading her. I must have those tablets in their translation. Is that clear, Johnson? Perfectly, sir. Daddy? Daddy! Is 
Zedrak? Uh, Aline? Wake up. What? Oh, sorry. Excuse me. Here. You'll probably need this. Do you have your radio? Yes, I have it. Aline. When we get to the island, for your safety, you'd better stay close to me. My safety? Is there any danger? I was hired to authenticate the translation of the Abkhana Stone. I will be working with Professor Morton. My best friend died because of those tablets. He was killed on Shadow Island. And I swear I'm gonna find whoever did it. I'm very sorry. Listen, I know Professor Morton's reputation. He's a scientist, a great researcher. Well, to me, he's just another suspect. Getting close. Shadow Island. What was that? <laughs> kind of a badass cutscene actually. It is a it is quite a decent intro. go so edward edward canby oh my god you know this is so strange i can't remember if i said this in my first run or not but it's so bizarre playing as uh gonna well we're going to be playing as edward canby this time he's 33 my god when i first played this i was like dude motherfucker's an old man and uh <laughs> i'm sitting here now and it's like damn this dude's a year younger than me holy shit funny how uh how time time uh, interferes with everything doesn't it um yeah so as we know from playing through the first uh chapter or playing through eileen's story anyway uh we know that she was convinced to come here because although the official line is she's here to work with morton and uh translate the tablets which as we find out a little bit later on in the game again this isn't really spoilers if you've watched the first part which you should have by the way. Um, yeah, that's already done. And she's been convinced that Morton is her dad, which is a lie. But that was just to get her to come to the island. And if I remember correctly, Edward has been sent here um, with the illusion that his partner, Fisk, is dead. Now, I can't actually remember, but I'm pretty sure at the end of the... Uh, first run, you find out this partner's not dead or something. I don't know. Anyway, I'm sure we're going to find out a little bit more about that as we go. So, without any further ado, let's once again go back to Shadow Island. But this time with the uh, uh, double barreled gun. Why not, I guess. Alone in the dark. We're not really alone, are we? There's plenty of monsters around. <laughs> okay. So here we are. At least we have a vague idea of what we're doing this time. I mean, you already start off with 24 bullets. Uh, also, one thing I will mention, look at his gun. That is not the gun that he picked up out of the cabinet. Uh, that's monstrous. I like it. My good old dabble, uh, dabble, double barreled dual cylinder revolver fires two bullet, uh, bullets simultaneously. I'm hooked up on monster and caffeine, so I'm stuttering like a madman. Um, yeah, we've already got like 24 bullets, so I'm guessing it's discharges, you know, obviously two at once, which means we only actually have six shots with 12 spare, which is already more ammo than we actually ever got with the other gun. Uh, well, at least with Eileen's handgun anyway. I think we got like maybe two boxes of bullets for it, which was pretty bizarre when I think about it. Maybe Edward here gets all of the, 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 the nine millis. I don't know. 
Um, but then she relies heavily on the triple barrel shotgun, which, as I said in the actual playthrough, sounds a lot better than it actually was. I thought the triple barrel shotgun was hot garbage. Uh, <laughs> you do get some juicy weapons, but not those. Anyway, uh, all right. So we have some objects. We have a charm of saving, a walkie-talkie. We're going to be experimenting with the walkie-talkie a little bit more because you can contact the other character, which I never really did uh, as Eileen because I, I just forgot about it. But every now and again, we did get some dialogue between them, which we're going to lean into a little bit. So contra uh, contacted Johnson confirmed me that he sent Fisk to Shadow Island. Must retrieve those Indian writing tablets and their translation. Must also protect that Eileen Cedric. Hmm. Protect her from what? Fisk's notebook. And I have a little little dark demon trying to break into my room, I can see. Yes, yeah, a little cat head popping around the corner. Um, right. Consult. Let's have a look. Oh, sweet, merciful Jesus, we have a Bible to read. Okay, my interest in Shadow Island goes back to the period when I worked for the Bureau, Bureau uh, 713. The director, Christopher Lamb, ooh, we know that name, gave me the case investigating Obed Morton, a young anthropology professor born on the island, Obed Morton, the island, the Abkhan, how was it, Abkhandis? Canvas? Yeah, them. Uh, Amera Indians and a number of events, vary, uh, varying drama, all seem to be somehow linked by some dark secret. Bureau 713 was officially charged with observation, containment, and und uh, uh, undermining of small groups of uh, communists and their sympathizers. Communists. That actually does say communist. Okay. <laughs> kind of red on black there. Very hard for me to read. I do have to select here. And their sympathizers who were acting or likely to act within the territory of the United States. However, I quickly understood that Christopher Lamb had, uh, let's say, more personal idea of the Bureau's mission. Lamb, a mysterious and manipulative character, seemed to be almost obsessed with the occult, the paranormal, and magic. I can't say that I ever really understood his true objectives, but the reports that were sent to him and which sometimes came through my desk were more often concerned with a group of Satanists here or there, or such and such a sacrifice, or even in this or that voodoo bewitchment. Okay, so he likes the occult. We get it. Uh, then about the movements of the communists, oh, more than that, uh, about the movements of communist agents, saboteurs that finally proved so inoffensive. The Bureau uh, itself seemed to develop this atmosphere of mystery. Everything became compartmentalized. We were cut off one from another. Contacts between agents themselves were becoming rare. However, the means at Lamb's disposition seemed bottomless. I can't believe that Lamb could have carried out such sweeping operations without some support from very high places. The number and diversity of the cases we were taking up didn't stop rising during the five years I spent at the Bureau. It was in 78, during my last six months there, that Lamb asked me to write up a report on Obed Morton. The man uh, had what it takes to arouse interest. The last child of one of the most powerful families of the Boston Arrowcrest... Um, yep, yep, that word... Um, Morton was one of the youngest professors at Massachusetts. At 24, he had written a brilliant uh, doctorate. His studies on the Abkansas tribe are remarkable, remarkable for their clarity and profundity. Very quickly, however, his scientific work seemed to get infected with a personal involvement that undermined his objectivity. During one of his... Classes, he shared with his students the fabulous archaeological discoveries that his grandfather, Jeremy Morton, had made on Shadow Island, a Morton family possession since the beginning of the 19th century. A few years later, 
to a packed floor of half amused, half worried colleagues, he gave the demonstration of the magical properties of a charm he had found on the island. System of tunnels. Oh, interesting. He was persuaded that the charm enabled the wearer to retain a precise and clear memory of the events he lived. More than once, he evoked the world of darkness. That's interesting. This kind of feels like they're linking save charms in there. I like that. Uh, the events he lived. More than once, he invoked the world of darkness, a kind of hell on earth, which, if we believed him, is the origin of all the evil that has come into the world since the arrival of modern man. His whole work in the last few years, the university has been cons uh, consecrated to the translation of ancient symbols on a few pieces of bark. Yeah, we've seen those. All this was the cause of a fierce argument that I had with Lamb. I failed to see what this Obed Morton and the Shadow Island had to do with the Bureau's mandate. Lamb immediately demanded my resignation and obliged me to sign a ridiculously strict contract of confidentiality. The talking down that followed contained more threats than advice that led me to do a little investigation, uh, investigating of my own into Lamb. The least one can say is that he has covered his tracks. Christopher Lamb was born in 1938 in Casca, Hungary. When his father was shot for war crimes in 1946, his family emigrated to the United States with a borrowed name. A powerful network, including many of his father's old friends, gave him a lift up the ranks in a number of para-government agencies specializing in the fight against communism. In 1971, he became director of the highly secreted uh, Bureau 713. The Bureau was involved in a number of dodgy operations, black ops stuff in America, American territory, but also in a number of friendly countries. Surrounding himself with a personal guard of ultranationalist militarists, Lamb became a versatile state within state. He was untouchable. The congressman who had been calling for the closure of Bureau uh, 713 after the fall of the Berlin Wall seemed to have given up. Rumours talk of pressure on them and their families. Lamb was the victim of a suicide attack by a left-wing activist. Those damn left-wingers. As a souvenir, he is paralysed at the neck. Uh, it's just a hypothesis, but it seems to me that Lamb and Obed Morton got in touch about the tablets the billionaire had used uh, at his conference. Morton had been known to associate them with a kind of apocalypse in which the darkness will walk the earth. No doubt Lamb saw it in another opportunity to increase his power. From this time, I have kept only a charm, knowing nothing of its role or significance. Okay. So, Lamb is a dodgy fellow, and we also have a sketch of the island. Good. Excellent. Now I can turn my monitor. So, 20 odd minutes into the video, we can finally play. Now, uh, as I played this as a kid, uh, my brother and I actually did play this part of the game. That bit there. Oh my dudes, that bit there made us shit our pants. Oh dude, love it. This gate is secured with a combination padlock. Yeah, well, we don't have the code for that. Uh, yeah, we don't have the code for that, Edward. Edward, can we, thank you. One hell of a delay. That is so badass. You know, that's one of the freakiest things ever, I think, in a horror game. When the lightning flashes and you can see all the monsters everywhere. But, um, you know, that really does give you the feeling that they are in another dimension that is just about ready to tear into our own. Okay, so the parachute is of no use because why would it be? Carnby, answer me, please. Aline, are you okay? How could I be okay? What was that thing? What the heck's going on here? At the moment, I've got no idea. Listen, I want out of here, right now. Look, don't panic. I'll think of something. 
Where exactly are you? On the roof of some kind of manor. I nearly got myself killed. I'm really scared. Please do something. I landed in some woods about a hundred yards from the manor. Can you see me? See you? How could I? Help me for Christ's sake. Turn on your flashlight. Makes sense. Okay. I can see you now. Okay. I see you too. Here's what we'll do. Try and get inside the manor, then find a place to hide. I'll come looking for you. How long will that take? I don't know. As little time as I can. What? Aline, I'll come for you. And that's a promise. Hurry. Okay. So, I do love the fact that she's just whining on to him. Like, this is in some way our fault. But, you know. She's trying the whole damsel in distress thing. Later on, she's going to come out of her shell and become a badass, but at this precise moment in time, she's a bit of a wuss. Okay, cool. And we are the hardened, grizzled badass. Apparently. Ooh, blood. This Chris's blood. Hmm. Blood. Oh, can hear wolves. Alright, well, what? Fuck me, that's concerning. We don't have anything in here. Oh my god. Maybe we do. Jesus. Alright there, Chief. No, no, don't move. Don't move. Who did this to you? This island is a hellhole. Not men. Filthy beasts. Flee! Get out of here any way you can. How did you get here? The boat. Last shipment. He shot everyone. Jesus. Just try to stay calm. You've got a gun. I'm leading you some bullets. I'll go and find help. Help? But you'll die like everyone else. Run. I'll be back. So it looks like this gentleman's lost an arm. Uh, so he's going to be rapidly bleeding to death. You know, severed arteries and all that stuff. Why are we giving him bullets? We have not given him bullets. Good. So he came in on the boats that uh, they were using to ship supplies here. Uh, and apparently Lamb killed everybody? Damn, bro. Alright, well. Godspeed, my friend. Godspeed. I keep forgetting we can actually aim and walk in this game. Whoa. Did he kill an enemy or did he just like blast his brains out? You got any bullets for me, Chief? God. Jesus. Yeah, okay, I mean, I guess. Guess he didn't actually leave anything for us. That's such a cool intro, though. You know, they set these games up really well because Eileen's intro was really good as well. Uh, you know. Having Lucy straight off the bat letting you in on a little bit of information of what's going on around here. And then obviously you've got that. That's really foreboding with that dude. That's really nice. Oh, this door is locked. Gee, could it possibly be the key? And if that dude was running away and he locked this door behind him, might not be a good idea to... Ooh, but bullets! Bullets! We've got bullets! Oh, we've got dogs too. They don't look like demon dogs though. They look just like normal... Oh shit. Yeah. Yeah, okay, they might be demon dogs. Oh, there we go. Fuck. 
So they actually like just rip that poor bowder out of pieces. Okay, that's savage. Magnesium bullets. Okay, now we're getting these in packs of 24 as well, I suppose, which is significantly more than we ever got with uh, Eileen. Uh, yeah, we. Um, okay. Oh, we. Oh. I was expecting that to be locked. Does that mean that route up here is locked? Hmm. That's where that dog got sliced. At least heavily nibbled anyway. You know. Okay, so we're up here. Oh shit! Made me jump! Son of a bitch. Well, I don't know if I want to fight these things. I'm going to guess that we're probably not going to be here that long. Oh, Christ. Why? Why did, why did we get a cutscene? Like, showing us shit going down. Like, what was that about? Um, and now they are still following me. Okay, so can we do the loop the loop? Get them all the way around. I mean, they are pretty easy to dodge. As long as we don't get another cutscene. And where's that? Oh, God, there's one up there as well. Fucking hell. Where the hell? Jesus. Okay. So. Can go up here. Yes. Sculpture. Kind of makes me want to know what was the other way then. Ooh. Can we phone Eileen? Eileen? No. You can tell if you're going to have a cutscene because. Um. Ooh. Yeah, I'm guessing we are actually going the right way, so let's go back. Yeah, you can tell if you're going to have a chat with Eileen because uh, it will go all grainy and uh, cut to like a video. Yep, yep, yep. These dogs really aren't worth the bullets, actually. I mean, there's a lot of them, but they don't really pose too much of a threat. As long as we keep moving. They do seem to get confused as well, after a while. Okay, so that's obviously the way to go. So what's this way, then? Bullets? <laughs> yeah, bullets. I mean, sure. Ooh. Ooh. And more... More dogs, I guess. Jesus! Oh. Was that two boxes? That was two boxes. Oh, well, I'm glad I went back. Oh, bloody hell. Good thing we did check this out, guys. First aid kit. Yeah, they're really packing us up with bullets, aren't they? I'm not going to fight any of these dogs, because, like, there doesn't seem to be any point. I'm guessing once we get inside the mansion... Um, oh, sorry, the manor. I'm guessing we don't really have to worry, then. Hey, Pooch. Hey, Pooch. Hey, Poochie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, Jesus fucking Christ. Note to self. Next time... Oh, God. Nah, there's probably nothing up there. Next time we're <laughs> going to a strange, uninhabited manor, maybe don't pack a string of sausages in our back pocket. Just saying, all right? Now, Chris Redfield... Made the same mistake, alright? So, I'm not going to blame you too much. Guessing this might be locked. Um, yeah, it looks like it. Right, so that door, I guess, is locked. Carnby? Carnby, come in. What's going on? Things. Terrifying things. Shadows. Living shadows. Aline? It's awful. Come and get me. I'm begging you. Come quick. Aline. Aline. Uh, we're trying. Shit. Ah, shit. Ooh. 
She's already got the gun. Alright, she's working fast. Working a lot faster than we did. Okay, oh. Dead dog. Oh god, here we go. Yeah, one of those bloody things. Oh, Jesus. Oh no, 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 no. He's kind of behind us. That's fine. Uh, right, you can stay behind me, pal. Another... Do you want to activate the valve? Uh, yeah? Okay, I guess we had to do that anyway. Makes sense. <laughs> Alright. Hey, guys. Oh, you... Oh, I hate that. That happened before as well. Like, an enemy would appear and get a free hit on you. I don't like that. That's just... Oh, Jesus. That's cheesy AF. Look at this. This is a really pretty colour. This reminds me of Resident Evil 3. Uh, no, Resident Evil 7. You're sneaking through the water. And it's like three days until Resident Evil Village comes out. But <laughs> guess who doesn't have internet? So, who can't download the game? Oh, Jesus. Um, ow. Yeah, that sucks. Alright, let's just move out the... Okay. That's not going to end well if we just... We need to kill this thing, don't we? Guessing we need to kill this thing. Right, one blast. Just back away. At least if we blast him. Oh god. That does actually, you know, hit him back a little bit. Which is nice. Only thing is, we don't know how many bullets it's going to take to kill him. Now, if we remember, that shotgun took two blasts, I think. But the only trouble is, we know from past from past experience, that the handgun in this game is weak as piss. And unfortunately, there's no way to know if those things are dead. He's had 14 bullets. Alright, I think we're good. I think we got him. Ah, right. Yeah, let's climb the ladder. Let's get out of here. Seems like a good thing to do. Yeah, considering how weak these bullets are, we don't want to just waste them. Ah! Yeah, it's sealed up. The save medallion. Interesting. Okay. Charm of saving. Uh. Ah. This is where Combi comes in. You want to open the casket? Yeah. Now, this was open when we played as Eileen. No. That's not Eileen. No, that can't be Eileen. Have a gilded key. Yeah, I don't think anything's going to eat Eileen's eyes out. Because, you know. Oh, yeah, let's look through the spy hole. Ah. That's like the underground. It. Interesting. Okay. Uh, medical. Oh, wow. Okay, they just just give us the shotgun basically right off the bat. Cool, I guess. Ah, and some more bullets. Don't mind if we do. Oh no, there's shotgun shells and bullets. Holy shit, they're really stacking us up here, aren't they? I'm not complaining. I like bullets. 
Anyway, guys, uh, I think... Oh, shit, we're on, like, 35 minutes here. Uh, we're going to leave it here. When we come back, I guess we're going to keep exploring. Um, we have the shotgun literally straight off the bat. Um, we're, we're actually looking quite good <laughs> when it comes to ammo. Not convinced about the uh, handgun, if I'm being honest. It does still seem weak as piss. But at least we've got a lot of ammo for it. So there is that. Anyway, guys, thank you very much for watching. And as always... Till next time.